everybody out there on Wiper Street. You already know what it is. Salute everybody. What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to Steve Boosa GS. We got another scorecard reaction for y'all. And you already know what it is. Let's get it. Look, stop. Before you, before you get mad, before you start attacking me, just know I brought you tissues. <laughs> Yo, y'all got so mad over my last reaction. Let me let me make a few things clear. Let's clear the air on quite a few details revolving the last mode nine reaction, the research that I have done since then, and the mentality going forward. All right, number one. Was I fully aware of his legacy in Nigeria and his place in hip-hop uh, at the time of doing the previous reaction? No. No, I was not. Would that have changed the way that I went about it? No. No, it was not. I am fully educated now on who Mode 9 is, what he has done, and it doesn't change the fact that that last video was garbage, okay? I did not pick that video to trash any artist anybody ever I don't do that I go based on the comments and then sometimes I have a quality team the quality team approves stuff creates a list that's how that happens I was just knocking out reactions knocking out reactions before and decided to get to it and just did it myself because we were on a roll turns out wasn't something that was fit for the channel I don't enjoy reviewing music that I don't like because I never want to feel as though or come across as though I'm disrespecting an artist you feel me like that's the whole reason that I have a quality team and so I don't have to do that all right with that being said it was not a good video I also understand or what you to understand that those types of freestyles and shit like that are still being scored and graded across all music so it's next to impossible not next to impossible but it's not very likely that a freestyle especially one that was like a mixture of like pre-writtens and off the dome is ever going to be able to touch like a studio quality track it's just not going to so you guys should be mad at the people requesting the shit not at the reactor who's being keeping it 100 with you you know what i'm saying i'm not going to like someone just because of their legacy and that has nothing to do with it being uh, a nigerian artist either like i don't like most american old school rappers you guys never if you guys go to any of my top list any of the top playlists that i put out i don't listen to old school rap it's not like the, the earliest i go back is dmx and nas like anything before that i respect i give the nod to but it's never been my cup of tea you know what i'm saying rap has evolved a lot since then and the stuff that i like personally is some of that shit that is involved when it comes to like the punchline flows and shit like that so with that being said uh we are doing another one now now since the last one i did take the time to do some research and not just in the youtube comments where you guys are telling me whatever you want to tell me uh, i hit up some of the og artists in africa that i fuck with and they kind of gave me the rundown so if you're new to mode 9 and you want the rundown this is basically why he's garnered as much of a strong fan base as he has so essentially, he was holding down hip-hop in Nigeria at a time when nobody else was, when it wasn't the cool thing to do. You could make the argument that a lot of the artists that are dope now that we enjoy from Nigeria wouldn't be doing music if he hadn't laid the groundwork, uh, which can be said about most of the, the, the originators in any country, in any continent that you want to. And there's something to be said for that. There is a certain amount of respect to be paid due. There, like, there is a certain amount of homage to be paid when you're talking about the people that paved the way. And clearly, that was not conveyed properly in my last uh, video. So for that, I do apologize if you came across to be disrespectful. However, I do feel as though... Uh, it was an accurate representation for the video that we were looking into. But don't think that I go and I pigeonhole myself into one opinion. I didn't write off Mode 9 as an individual. I didn't choose not to educate myself on the impact that he's had on the hip-hop culture there. So, with all that being said, we're going to do another one now. We have a studio quality track that has been approved through the quality team. And just to show good faith, we're not even going to score it. There's not going to be a scorecard reaction. It's going to be more of an opportunity for my channel to just share dope music with my audience um, for you guys to go and, and see a studio quality version uh, of an artist who we did not necessarily fuck with on a freestyle set. Does that make sense? Hopefully you guys take this as a half apology uh, and half just repentance for me go going and being a little bit harsh in the last video. Uh, but with that being said, it's all love as always. I appreciate those of you who are able to see past that and not be offended. And for those of you that were, fuck you. I don't really care. But with that being said, run the gauntlet. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Little bell notification guy. Mode 9, you're up. This time with a studio track. Uh, let's hope it goes better than the last. I don't need my comment section blowing up again. Five minute intro. Ridiculous. 
Do we got a video? We do. We got a video. Let's full screen it. Boom. Shalom and kaboom. Another thing. Cry. Once in a while. This has a very, very storytelling vibe right off the bat. If I had to guess, I would say this is going to be a storytelling track. This beat just sounds like that old school hip hop, let me tell you about my ways type shit. You know what I'm saying? So good. Tell it off. Steam and cry. True that, true that. Don't be ashamed. Don't wipe your eyes. Let it tear through your eyes. Let everybody see. It's a natural thing. Because it's a story to tell. They were man and wife, but he hardly slept with her. Out late with his friends, hurting his liver. She nine months pregnant, crying a river. Alone at home, about to deliver. He drinks away his pain, but more pain to give her. The cold street make her fight a lip and shiver. She was a diver. When they met back at school, she was so fine. Everybody was a fool. Now she's married to one who's also a drunk. Coming back late, slurry words, smelling like a skunk. Okay, see right off the bat, this is already a million times more cohesive than the freestyle track. I, I told you guys it would be different tonality and everything like that when we finally start breaking down and reviewing an actual track. Uh, so we do, we have a storytelling track, which means that there is cohesiveness uh, between the beat selection and the topic, which is dope. Uh, on top of that, check his tonality, the tonality that he's actually delivering it in. This is one of those instances where the rah-rah shit that I like wouldn't make any sense. Uh, he's using a delivery style and format that is completely cohesive with the, the message of the song. Um, and it's super relatable, too. I mean, I don't know about you guys. I was raised in a household uh, between drug addicts and shit like that. So alcoholic is not very far different from that. He's hitting on a very reliable, uh, not reliable, relatable topic. Um, all right, let's see where he goes with it. I like it. Also a drunk, coming back late, slurry words, smelling like a skunk. Working hard, but he drink harder. Married to the bottle, about to be your father. Baby kicking, got a crying on the phone. So he broke the speed limit, dropping drunk like he in a race, trying to win it. Lost control, overtaking on the bend. Unsure his death, an untimely end. Wife gave birth, what joy, it's a boy. But she cried when she found out she was a widow. Morning, bold headed, that's the culture of the Ebos. To be honest with you, we probably wouldn't score this anyway because of the topic. Um, it, 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 whenever dealing with death, even, even fictional death, I guess a lot of times it's not, it doesn't feel right to, to score and reduce it down to a point system um, when there's so much emotion that's being conveyed. Uh, this is this is definitely a deep story. Unfortunately, it is one that's probably super, super reliable um, or relatable. Why do I keep saying reliable? But relatable uh, car accidents, drunk driving accidents, shit like that. It's one of the biggest deaths in the world, biggest cause of death in the world. Um, yeah, overall, I think this is incredible compared to the last one that we've seen. Uh, like I said, everything seems super cohesive. Uh, let's let's keep going. In heaven, heaven, closer than family, neighbors for many years. Two young men always topping their pairs. Their parents never thought that they would bring home tears. Separated, then they met in college, pursuing knowledge, but they couldn't hang. Cause they were members of rival gangs, eyeballing each other, walking with their people when you bang with the colors. Rest of my leaves, you now you're looking over your back. So this is interesting to me. Um, I this, this topic came up um, from Kenya when uh, we had um, Calligraph Jones talking about Bloods in one of his songs. It was kind of like explained that it's more for the image that you guys don't really have gangs like that over there. Uh, is that the same for Nigeria? Like, is this is this more of like, hey, this is a third party storytelling track or 
is the gang life like really serious over there in Nigeria? Because I, it's interesting to see like country to country how that changes. Um, we'll see where it goes with it. I think it, it's 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 definitely relatable from this side. Uh, I'm curious to see how this was taken in Nigeria, which is interesting because like like I said, like from what I found out about him and his story and and, and his come up of doing this with himself and not having a lot of people like back him in the idea of what he was doing. I think picking topics that may not be necessarily relatable to your immediate demographic could have contributed to that. Uh, so if, if like Bloods and Crips and shit like that aren't big in Nigeria, I can definitely see this being a miss to the ears over there and definitely more catering to, to the overseas uh, demographic. It's interesting. Expect an evil, they were cold-blooded, grown, grown men, both lethal. A far shot from the fun-loving boys, the guns that they tote, far from toys. And one night, both camps had beef, hanging in the atmosphere, they left a shroud of grief. A face-off, right in the school premises, that night, they met their nemesis. They shot each other point-blank, eye to eye, oh my god, they made their mamas cry. And it, you can you can tell the difference between this and the first one that we did. Like, there's there's nothing cheesy about this. He's not stepping out of character. He's been completely on point with the format of the song. Like, this is not one that even if this wasn't like a redemption video that we would have trashed in any way, shape, or form. Um, he's been completely on topic. I think this has been a, a beautiful song. I'm I'm curious to see how it was received because of the things that we pointed out. Uh, but in terms of like quality tracks quality concepts like everything of this is just infinitely better than the previous one we've seen I think it was a good idea to let the track breathe through. You, you deliver two heavy verses, uh, whether it could just be for the video, but in and of itself, I think the idea of letting it breathe after that was a good, good artistic direction. Yeah. I think overall we have a dope storytelling track. Uh, sort of an old school hip hop format on it but again infinitely infinitely more polished infinitely more cohesive than what we checked on the last one uh hopefully you guys enjoy the opportunity to again uh share one of the legends from nigeria over there with everybody on the channel uh as always i love y'all i appreciate y'all i'll catch y'all on the next one let's go